uh, it kind of goes back to that that stupid little catchphrase that like done is better than perfect. I think that you know when it comes to recurring content, that's especially true. Um, oh, it doesn't super need, true. doesn't need to be it yeah. doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to start doing. Yeah, because like once you've started, you have that fear of stopping, which is way better than the fear of starting. Right? Yeah, that's so <laughs> true. That's so true. You are now listening to the Creative Juice podcast, brought to you by Entrepreneur.io. What's up, Indies? Welcome back to the Creative Juice Podcast. Today, we have a very special episode because Corinne is uh, on tour with one of our agency clients right now, which is awesome. She's out there doing uh, live shows, and that's badass. And, and as a special treat, I now get to have our agency lead, Jack, on the podcast. How's it going today, Jack? What's going on? Thanks for having me, man. I'm, uh, I'm super stoked to be here. Dude, we are stoked to have you, as always. Um, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, recurring content. This is our sort of recurring content, recurring media month. Uh, if you're an artist out there, you've probably uh, come across this question before, like, what do I say to my fans? How do I keep them engaged? What do I email people about? And recurring content is the answer to all of those questions. Um, and it's something that a lot of our indies don't do enough. So I'm pretty psyched to talk about this this month, get this info out there and, and have people creating their own recurring content series that can serve them for years to come. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think it's kind of something that we've seen just across the board, both in the indies community and at the agency, uh, is that recurring media, recurring content uh, is something that you know it kind of falls through the cracks. I think um, just with just with how we talk about digital marketing and how we talk about growing your career uh, as an independent artist, so much of what we focus on is campaign driven and. Uh, and a lot of times ads driven uh, through paid traffic. And this idea of having you know recurring content and, and what that's supposed to look like um, really falls through the cracks. So I think it's a really important topic for us to cover. Uh, we talked about it last week at uh, Indies yep. Live in our ground report. Um, and that was really, really cool. And there was a lot of amazing communication and conversation going on about it. So yeah, I'm stoked to be here and to, uh, and to kick some ideas around. Hell yeah. So for, for those of you indies out there who are not in our Indie Pro membership, which you should be by now, there's just so much packed into there. But if you're not an Indie Pro member, you don't know about Ground Reports. Every single month, we go live in the Indie Pro member area to discuss a topic that has come up in our agency or in our testing that is relatively new or is something that we haven't really covered before, we don't have a full training about. And this past week, Jack went live to talk about recurring media and really, just like Jack said, like a lot of what we focus on or a lot of what indies really want to know at first is how do I gather a fan base? How do I get new fans, get new email subscribers, even generate customers? But there's not a lot of talk or focus about you know, what do you do at the, on, like with your email list, the time in between, how do you nurture people over the long term? And it's not easy to have music itself be your recurring content. Obviously music is easier to batch, right? It's easier to go in the studio and record 20 songs and mix them than it is to record one every single week. And it, the, the logistics of it aren't very strong. Similarly, when you have a batch of songs, you might be inclined to release them all at once because that's how people are used to consuming music. So it gets difficult to use songs themselves as your recurring content. It's difficult to do a music video every single week if that was your idea. But there are other things out there that you can do to come you know, and talk to your audience on a weekly basis and provide entertainment value, provide content value to them without making making so much music that it's literally bankrupting you, right? Yeah, I was just going to chime in and say, not only is it difficult logistically to do with uh, whether it's, you know, whether you're a one man artist and you don't have a team or whether you're in a band or whether you're an artist that has a team surrounding you, not only is it difficult to do logistically, but it's expensive to go into the studio <laughs> and to produce high quality yeah. music videos uh, and constantly kind of lean on that as your as your recurring media, um, despite what the yeah. despite what the industry does in you know releasing music videos uh, and releasing singles um, you know every couple weeks or every month, making that a uh, making that your recurring media strategy, in my opinion, just isn't uh, the best use of your time and your resources. 
Yeah, definitely. So yeah, w- today we're going to be talking about recurring media in the form of weekly live streams, weekly podcasts, vlogs, even blogs, or, you know, th- there's all types of recurring content strategies that you can use, even if it's your Instagram story, you know, whatever it is, there should be something where when someone becomes your listener, they become your fan. They know that they can get something from you every week by just going to this place at this time and you'll be there and you'll have something new for them. That provides that long-term growth. Like if you go out and you get 200 new fans in a week and they're all now your listeners. They are pretty much deteriorating as a fan if you're not touching up the relationship, adding value to it, you know, creating new points of contact. So they're in the process of losing interest if you're not maintaining interest. And so having that thing that they can come back to every single week, make sure that when you're out there campaigning, you're not building, you know, something that's going to fall apart in the months thereafter. And that's really what it's about is, is maximizing the value of all the fan base building you're doing is by, by keeping them there with something that they can rely on. Yeah, totally. And I think, um, kind of just to piggyback off that in, in, in years prior, you know, over the past five, seven, ten years, a lot of what a lot of what we've seen musicians talk about is like, oh, what do I post about on social media? Um, how do I schedule things out? Um, what kind of what kind of content should I be sharing? What does all of that look like? And recurring media, rec- having recurring content really solves that kind of age old question that, uh, you know, that I, that w- as we were kind of saying, has sort of maybe gone away or diminished a little bit in, in our community um, and what we've seen indies talking about uh, with regards to their digital marketing. But recurring media can really be the the spot that kind of fills that hole and brings back in why having content that you're putting out is so important and why it's important to engage your audience uh, in the long term. Yeah, it's not just like it's not just having something them for them to do after they become a fan, but also in the process of becoming a fan. Like I know when I've started becoming a fan of digital marketing as a whole, the fact that I had, you know, I think at that time it was like 50 episodes of perpetual traffic or maybe it was 40 to binge on and then become a week to week listener. Um, the perpetual traffic being digital marketers podcast, the, the fact that I could binge on it and then become a regular listener and, and be improving my digital marketing skills while doing it. That was huge. So it's not only building up something that people can come back to week to week, but while they're getting into you, right, you can set up all the campaigns and the funnels in the world. It will never match the largesse and the amount of entertainment value that having an archive of content for people to just go back through from episode one can be. And, and as a podcast listener, that's especially true. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it kind of just as another analogy, you think about how how people consume television when they become fans of a TV show. Um, just kind of tying this into my life, I became a big fan of the TV show Doctor Who about four, oh, almost five years big ago. Time. Five years ago. And I watched like a, a handful of episodes and uh, there wasn't a season on at the time. There wasn't anything to watch and I was kind of into it. I was starting but to But you get, had oh, like, what, 15 years of, <laughs> of <laughs> backlogged content to go yeah, through? Yeah, <laughs> so I dropped into Netflix and binge watched the whole, sh- the whole series from start to finish and right. then when it was time for the new <laughs> season to be launched in the fall, like that next fall, I was so stoked and ready for it. Like I was fully invested <laughs> yeah, in, yeah. into what was happening and I think that that same thing can be true for for what musicians can do. Um, and, and recurring media can really facilitate totally. that, especially live streaming. Like we're talking about in this episode, because it, it doesn't take a high amount of, uh, of real production value to do it, um, to do it well, right. you know, you can have a webcam and a decent microphone and, and your guitar or whatever. And, and you're set, um, a good looking setting and you're good to go. Yeah. And it's also something that like, you know, with campaigns, we have to spend all the time before the campaign goes live, making it as perfect as it can be. We don't get to iterate on a lot of our campaigns, but with recurring content, you can improve it over time, which is kind of the coolest thing is that like, it's not like a campaign. It's something that, you know, can be bad at first and, but also can change every single week. Um, and that's why I love it. It's like, I love looking back on creative juice, listening to episode one, how vastly different it it was than what we're doing now. And, and just kind of seeing that growth. It's like taking inventory and having gratitude for how far you've come 
well, that comes with starting something now and not stopping. And like, even when it comes to just general life success goals, like, like my ultimate life success um, advice is like, start doing something today that could be meaningful. Don't stop doing it and work your ass off. And that's it. That is it. And if you can do that, you'll, you'll usually find success. So recurring content kind of wraps that up in a neat little package. And in this episode, like, obviously we want to tell you guys a little bit about how you can set up your recurring content. And we're going to have a full training on just starting a recurring content series coming out literally maybe by the time this episode airs or a, a week thereafter, which I'm very excited about. But I did want to interview you a little bit, Jack, on one of uh, your agency artists that you oversee, Dave Pettigrew. Now, Dave Pettigrew, um, he he has a lot of success with his recurring media, his live streams, but I wanted to start kind of back at the beginning and kind of get a sense of, you know, how that started, how, how it first came to be. Yeah, sure. So, um, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's been pretty interesting to watch it, um, evolve and grow and, and change, um, and, and what, and what Dave is doing um, in his in his recurring media live streams. So he's doing uh, these Monday night live streams uh, where he's going live in a Facebook group that he has set up uh, specifically for this and for fans that would be interested in it. And they've been coming into his world from a variety of places, um, from top of funnel video uh, video ads that he's been running, fan finder campaigns. Uh, he's been co- they've been coming in through uh, just content that he's posting uh, on his socials. They've been coming in through. Uh, through his email list because he collects a lot of emails when he goes out on the road. So they've kind of been filtering into his recurring media and, uh, and his live stream that he does every Monday night. It's like a Monday night worship kind of, kind of setup that he's doing. Uh, he's a, he's a Christian, uh, worship artist and, uh, it's just been really, really cool. Every week it's been growing, you know, going from like 20 people up to 50 people to 75, 95, and, and beyond, and kind of just every week I talk to him and he's like, yeah, last night we had like 20 more people hanging on the whole time. And this is like an hour long, uh, Facebook live series that he does where he just hangs out with his fans and talks to them about what's going on in their week, talks to them about, uh, what's going on in his week. They, they sing some songs together. They, uh, they read the Bible. They talk about God. Um, these are all kind of perfectly on brand for what his music is and what his fan base is looking to do. And I think what makes it really, really special, um, and I've said this to him over and over and over again, I think it's really cool how he positions it as like a, as a place where people can hang out and, you know, Mondays can suck. (laughs) Mondays can be really hard. And he puts this out there as a way to be like, Hey, Mondays can, can really suck. Let's, let's hang out and, uh, and have Monday night worship together and, and, you know, kick off the rest of the week to be a little bit better. Um, and what's really cool is, uh, it's just a way for him to kind of facilitate and, and nurture that fan base that he's been building in all sorts of places, um, and get them more involved and keep them in the loop with what he's doing. And it even gives him a platform to, you know, make offers to them to keep them in the loop about different campaigns that he's running sales promotions, um, to push them over to his Patreon. He's got a Patreon set up and, uh, all of those things just grow immensely each and every week because of the fact that he's got this recurring content going on. So it's really, really dope. Yeah. It's, and it kind of like a few things came up as you were saying that, like, it, like just from listening to you is that like one, um, I love how it's not just about his music. I think like the easy thing for indies to do is do like a live performance. Right. It, Cause it's like, it's what we already became good at. Right. Yeah. A lot of us aren't good at talking on camera or fostering a community or inspiring people. We're good at that, at gigging, right? Like that's what we we practice. (laughs) That's what we're here for. Um, Exactly, right? But like when it comes to like building a marketing campaign, you can inject into it topics that aren't your music that you share with your target market. Yeah. So for me, it's like, I'm way into like from a casual perspective, like astrophysics, quantum physics, future technology, like nerdy kind of stuff. I don't know the mathematics behind it or the science behind it, but I know a lot about the, the logical concepts and I love talking about it and I love like ruminating on it. And 
you know, like that might be something that I might share in common with my audience, especially nerdy people who go and dig through the crates and find all the old soul music that I like. But, you know, it's hard to introduce that into an album launch campaign, yeah, right? Yeah, It'd almost sure. be like detracting attention from what matters. So having a place where you can reveal more than just the music is key. It is key to forming a lasting long-term relationship with your audience and I think recurring content is exactly where you do it. Like night and day, your campaign should be about your music. Sure, your recurring content should be where you figure out why you and your audience are going to be friends for life because you share so much in common. And it's cool to hear that like he's he's opening up from the music that's about worship to like to just general worship, like reading passages together and 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 talking to people and answering questions and having discussions like that's where the lifelong fans come in. Yeah. Because people, uh, they, people, honestly, they want to know what makes you tick as a musician and and what makes you tick as a human being. That's what this is about. This is about building real human relationships. (laughs) You know, it's not just about selling your stuff. Um, certainly that's a, that's a, a wonderful byproduct, but what really makes this move and and what makes what makes a someone connect with an artist is is the things that they share in common with them um so it's it's pretty awesome to see um kind of going off what you were saying Cirque. like for me and and i think this is helpful probably for or or might be helpful for our listeners just to kind of get into our heads about the things that we think about so that they could reflect upon you know what are the things that they could talk about like i'm super nerdy about Star Wars and, you know, nerdy entertainment, um, beyond Star Wars, Doctor Who, hell, even like Power Rangers. <laughs> I'm, I'm not ashamed right. to say that. Like, these are all things that like I find to be like nostalgic and fascinating and cool. And I can nerd out with my friends about them. So like to talk about them with, with my fans, that's fun. <laughs> I would love to be able to do yeah. that. And if they, if that's something that endears them to me and endears me to them, then by all means, it's, it's something awesome that you, that you should want to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's necessary to, rest- if you're starting recurring content, it has to be more about more than about what got brought the audience there in the first place. Right. And if it can be that it can actually bring more audience yeah. because people can hear about it from, you know, like you're not just telling your friend about a musician. You're telling your friend about an interesting conversation you had with a musician in a live stream. That's way different yeah, and way more compelling. So yeah, I think it's super important not only to create a relationship that's more than just, I listen to your music, but also to create a channel that, while it was originally intended to serve just your audience, it can grow. And I think our YouTube channel is a great, is great evidence of that. Like we started full stack creative because we wanted to serve our audience, but we also saw that our audience was into videography and into business and into all these different fields that we're kind of all nerdy about. So why not try to serve all of them? And through that, like we've had videos that are way left field from what we talk about in this podcast. And we get comments on those videos that are like, this is my truth we get new subscribers that we, that aren't in our other audiences. And it's just starting to hit a point where it's growing to where like, I'm not depressed every day by how (laughs) pathetically it's grown. Yeah. (laughs) You know, like it's starting to take on a life of its own very, very slightly like subtle cues that show me there's something here. Right. Right. And I think that's another thing is like, if you're going to start recurring content, it's going to be depressing at first, right? Like you're not going to do so well. There's not going to be that many people in your live stream or not that many downloads for your podcast. And it's a long-term strategy. You have to let it become what it will become. And if you don't just keep doing it, you're never going to know what that is. So um, Gary V talks about this a lot about how like most people quit before that one to two month mark. And that's where things like actually start to reveal themselves. Um, And yeah, I just think, I think, it not only provides that that new relationship, but it also provides something back to you more than just sales, more than just relationship with your audience. It provides you a place to develop as a, as a human being almost. Yeah. And kind of see where your brand can take you if you're just candidly yourself, you know? Yeah, I totally agree, man. I think that like, and I think that that's a stumbling block for a lot of people. It's like, oh, like my music is where I, my music is where I take the things that I don't necessarily want to talk about and I put that into my art 
but your recurring media and your, you know, whether it's a live stream or a podcast or a YouTube series, whatever that it might be, that's where you take the things that you put into your music and you unpack it for the people who like your music. And you're like, okay, well, since you like the music, like here's, here's like the rest of me. (laughs) And it's kind of, there's a, there's an element of vulnerability in it. I think beyond just the, you know, the, the feeling of doom of going live and having nobody there or getting two views on your YouTube video when you release it. Like there's, there's that feeling of vulnerability. And I think that that acts as a stumbling block to people as well. But In reality, like every artist, entertainer, business brand, whatever you, whatever you want to say, every, almost everyone that I've seen run with recurring media in some way, shape or form hasn't had like viral success with it right off the bat. That's not really the point, (laughs) you know, like that's not really what you're going for with it. Um, It's meant to be long term and it's meant to be something that grows and becomes like uh, almost like a community element of of, of who you are and that extension of your business. Yeah. I, I think also like it's it like, and Gary V also talks about this, but it's like, and it, and it actually really helped me when, when he said it, but like, yeah, sure. There are things that just explode. Casey Neistat's channel exploded. Peter McKinnon's channel exploded. Right. Right. And that does happen, but it's also the most visible so much so that it crowds out everything. That's not that you don't see what's not that you don't notice, but most things happen in a linear fashion, right? Yeah. <laughs> Most things grow over time. And that's especially true with our business. That's especially true with this podcast. Guys, like we now get 300 downloads a day, which means in a given week, we're servicing like, you know, what? I, I can't even do the math right now. It's 2,100, 2,100 downloads um, of our podcast. We started with zero downloads. And, you know, a month in, it's not like we ballooned up, right? Like it it happens step by step by step. And that's how a majority of these things happen. And you can't wait for some inflection point. I think musicians are prone to that too. Musicians are waiting for that moment where some guy with a cigar says, hey, a kid, you're perfect for the role. And they, now they're, they're a Hollywood star, you know, like, um, but that's not, that's not how anything happens. Like very, very rarely. And if you don't do it because that's not happening, you're, you are screwing yourself over. (laughs) Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so incremental. And I think that like, I honestly believe that there's a benefit in being, it being incremental because it allows you to, to make changes to what you're doing and to let the, let the content evolve as, as it should to fit the people that are engaging with it. You know, like you learn more about your audience and you learn more about the things that, that you as a tribe like to talk about together and and that you like to do together. It's almost like if you, if you compare it to like hanging out with your friends, you know, in the, when you're, when you're making new friends, say for example, you go to college and you don't really know what to do with the new people that you're meeting. Um, after a while you start to learn like what the people in that group like, and you start to figure out like, Oh, well, what do we, what do we like to do together? Do we like to go see movies? Do we like to go to shows? Uh, do we like to just hang out and like have drinks? Like what are our favorite places to go to? What do we like to talk about? And you kind of learn the patterns of your little tribe that you're building up. So to take that analogy to you and your fans is, is in, it's, it's easy to look at it when you, in that context when you think about it that way. Right. Yeah. I think, and a lot of people who have blown up kind of talk about that, how they like have to step back and kind of examine like who they are and what they actually wanted to do with this content because it happened so fast that they couldn't iterate. So they really have very little information. Right. Um, like you frequently hear about that, but yeah, I think like definitely don't be afraid of doing it incrementally. And if you're going to do recurring content, which you should, if you're an artist, like, Plan to do it for a year before you make any hard determinations as to the worthiness of it. Because it literally takes that long for you to actually look back and take a successful inventory. Like, it, you know, you can't do it at the one month or the two month mark. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's and like back on the topic of Dave Pettigrew, like, w- do you know where like where it started? Like how many fans he had in there in his first live streams? I'm honestly not sure. He's been doing it for a long time before I was even working with him on this account. Um, so I'm not even sure. Right. I'm not even sure what it was, h- how it started. But I imagine um, it probably started, you know, similar to how most how most artists start their recurring media with very few people hanging out. And it kind of just 
slowly grows from there and, and people talk about it and yeah. you get it out there more than just, you know, more than just talking about it at that one moment in time, you get it out there, you send it out to people in emails, you talk about it throughout the rest of the week, you post about it, you hit people with messages, you talk about it at your shows and it kind of grows uh, beyond just that, uh, you yeah. know, that immediate striking point where you're doing it. And I, I think that's something that's important. A lot of fans wait on the fence too. Like, yep. like we, like with full stack creative, we just, got a comment from like one of our longtime indies who was like i can't believe you're still keeping it up like the the amount of uploads we're doing um and that indicates to me that like there's people out there just kind of waiting to to make sure like it's serious before they dive in you yeah. know um they're waiting for it to be like really real and that can happen like you know y- you could be doing it for two months and then finally people start you know perking their heads up about it so Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, like, no. Yeah, definitely, um, people can wait on the fences regardless of how much they enjoy what you do. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I mean, like, there's people who, you know, they wait on the fences because they want to they wanna just watch you kind of feel it out. Like, oh, I know that he's probably just, like, getting his legs with this. So, like, I'll tune in once I know it's cool. Like, it's almost like the the kid who comes fashionably late to the party, you know? Yeah, and like as an artist, you probably put out so many marketing messages, you know, and and tell people about all the things you're doing that it's hard to know what's consistent, what you can rely on, and that's really what people are looking for is something they can come back to and really dig into, um, and and that is to say that like the main point of recurring content is building that relationship, fleshing out your brand, giving it more edge, giving it more things to hold on to and, and things people can understand about you. But it also serves many practical purposes. And that's kind of what we, we also wanted to get into in this episode was that, you know, you can run an amazing, and if you've listened to the Buddy System episodes, which we'll link in the show notes, you go to entrepreneur.io slash episode 81, and you'll find links to all these other episodes to talk about the Buddy System. But in general, with our with our buddy system framework, you want to introduce yourself to people, educate them a little bit on who you are. That education phase, if you have an archive of content, is much easier. They can go investigate you. They can watch your old content. They can know a lot about you yeah. because you've been doing recurring media. Then once you get permission, it's usually through some form of prolonged campaign. You're giving them free value for their email address so that you can follow up with them about getting them to the level where they're ready to support your music by buying a product. But if they don't buy right there, you know, you can't just keep hammering them over the head with the same sales message over and over again. You have to nurture them to a place where they're ready to support it. And recurring content serves that role in a big way because it means you have a reason to email your list every single week. You have a reason to put offers in front of them. That's not just, Hey, you didn't buy this yet. You know? Yeah, and I think that's especially true uh, in context with like a lot of what we talk about um, in our community when when folks are running album launches um, and they're doing it through like a funnel type of architecture. Um, not to get in the weeds here, uh, technicality wise, but I think there's a certain point where you know you have to accept that the people who who took your who took your content and went through and went through the experience of taking in your album they still might not be ready to buy it, <laughs> you know? And that's yeah. and that's fine. That's okay. But you can't keep hammering them over the head with the same message like you were saying, hoping that they'll just eventually be like, all right, fine, like, I'll buy it. Like, he keeps bugging yeah. me about it. Like, that's not the direction that you want to take things. Um, so having, having like, a, a bunch of a bunch of content in the form of your recurring content is a great way to just continue the conversation in a way that's light and, uh, and brings them further into your world. I think that that's super duper important and is often missed. Um, so when, when indies come to me and they say, um, Hey, my, my album launch didn't sell as, as well as I would like it to. Well, I say, okay, well, what, what are you doing now? What are you doing to, to make sure that those people don't drop off? Like you don't want to just lose them just because they didn't buy. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, uh, Dean Jackson talks about this survey they do of uh, inquiry survey. So, like, if you're inquiring about like the best vacuum cleaner, you send into this service and they make recommendations. Then they follow up with you to see if you bought it. And in general, most people do not buy until sixty days after the inquiry. Yep. Which kind of tells you that like people have different purchasing cycles. Some people pull the trigger right away. A broad majority of people wait longer than you might imagine, longer than two months. 
And so that just like Jack talked about, if they're not ready to buy at the end of that first kind of foray into your world, you know, that's okay because you can nurture them out over the long term until they're ready to buy. But if you're not communicating with them, so there's two extremes, right? One is you keep hammering them over the head with the same sales message and they're like, dude, I'm not, I don't want it right now, you know, or you wait 60 days without talking to them at all. And they're like, dude, what? Like, I haven't talked you know, I haven't, I'm fallen cold. I'm not on this bandwagon anymore. Yep. So, you know, keeping the, the relationship open and keeping that communication and building it, even developing it, making it more intense only serves you, right? It only serves you. And and so many people will do a bunch of lead generation, get a bunch of new subscribers for their email or messenger list. And then if they don't buy within 20 days, they consider those dead leads. And yeah. It's like crazy waste of money, you know? Yeah, it's 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 really insane. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh and it's something that we see a lot of, um, or at least I do. Speaking for myself, I see that I see that happen a lot. Um, so yeah, I think that it's something really, really f- important for people to consider in uh, in conjunction with all the types of campaigns that they're running, whether they're you know running a campaign for a launch or whether they're about to hit the road and be on tour, all of it it kind of ties into everything. Um, it just, it's, it, I mean, it goes back to the idea that in the buddy system that we talk so much about, nurturing is like the glue that holds everything together. Um, and recurring yeah. media can be a, such a huge part of that. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite podcasters, Dan Carlin uh, from Hardcore History, talks a lot about how quantity has a quality all on its own. So, like, even if your recurring content pieces aren't particularly glamorous, even if they're shot on a phone, the fact that you've been doing them every week for the last year has a quality of its own. It raises the value of the whole, the the consistency, the quantity of it, and the dedication, right? Like, um... There, there's all types of examples of that, right? Where it's like, it's not the thing that you're doing that matters. It's the fact that you did it over such a prolonged period of time with such regularity that's impressive. Yep. And I, this is where I think recurring content is so worth it because it actually builds like a level of stability and like, like a new platform on which to stand for your brand. Like people look at you different when you've achieved the level of something like, you know, a hundred podcast episodes or 50 live streams over the last year or something like that. Like those chunky numbers and, and that consistency, it shows people that you're capable, that you're serious and that they're not hitching up to some fly by night brand or some fly by night artists. Like you're in it for the long haul. And I think it has so many other fringe benefits that like can't be quantified like you know your your social life your family life how your community thinks of you changes when you have the kind of responsibility that it takes to do a recurring content piece and to stick with it it changes you as a I don't mean to make this sound like woo but it changes you existentially a little bit yeah I know I totally agree and I'm really glad you said that um, because another way that it not only does it change you, but I think kind of going to what you were saying about how like people latch on to the idea that they can latch on to you because they see this consistency. And something that I, I meant to mention was what I find to be, you know, particularly important about about your recurring content and why why we're kind of harping on it being something that it has to be consistent and recurring is that it kind of schedules you into somebody's day. Um People come to expect, like, right. I'm going to hang out with Kyle on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. and I'm going to listen to his podcast. That's going to be me hanging out. Or, you know, I'm going to hang yeah. out with Jack on his Thursday night live stream at 4 p.m. Um, that's so important. Like, it bakes you into their life. And I, I, I mentioned this on Indies Live last week. I said, um, really, like, we and every other business, uh, every other artist, every other XYZ, you name it, that's, com- that's trying to get the attention of people, we're competing for fifth place. Um, no matter what you're doing, you're competing for fifth place um, with people who are, throughout the course of their day, they're paying attention to uh, their kids, 
their rent, their bills, their mortgage. Um, they're paying attention to their family, whether that's their their husband, their wife, their mom, their dad, uh, whatever that might be. And then they're paying attention to their yeah. job or their school, uh, depending where they are in, in that stage of life. So right there, there's four places, four things that are in front of you. So yeah, you're competing for fifth place. So if you can find a way to niche yourself into somebody's day by having you know a recurring time and place where they hang out with you, then you're just setting yourself apart and putting yourself a little bit ahead of the rest of the competition and the noise. Big time, big time. Yeah, and I love that because we. I, I think you brought that up in a recent stand up meeting. We were talking about. Or I was talking about how. I don't know how people get this weird assumption that they're in competition with their peers um, because there's 7 billion people in the world and not everyone who would listen to you or your competitor has listened. So if there's still people out there waiting to be turned into any type of fan, then you're not competing with people for fans. You're competing with whatever else they're paying attention to right now. And then you brought that up and I was like, that makes so much sense. And it's true. Like you're not competing with businesses. You're not competing with other artists in your space. You're competing for attention, which is usually not reserved by your competitors, but reserved by other things in life. And kind of what you said about podcasts there made me think because I really make a lot of time for podcasts and I don't make time for it exactly. Uh, Joe Rogan and and, uh, I think also Jordan Peterson talk a lot about how there's this revolution in long form content where people's found time has been returned to them because I can put on a podcast and learn something in the hour in which I'm at the gym or I'm walking the dog or I'm doing the dishes. Now I have all that time that used to be fully occupied back. I have it back. And, um, and that's just like that, that means so much. So there are actually drawbacks, advantages and disadvantages to every type of recurring content that you could have. So podcasts are easy because I can use those during found time. Live streams are great because there's that live interactive element, but I have to be active while I'm doing it. Yeah. And with vlogs, you you have a kind of nice happy medium of both. It's relevant, it's recent, it's current, and there's a visual element to it, but I can ignore it just by kind of turning off my phone and listening to the audio. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. There, there are pros and cons to any approach that you take to take to recurring media. And I think that's important for any artist to, you know, to really consider, um, what, what his or her base is like, um, and what, what their fans are like, or, and, and at least like, at least mull that over a little bit. But again, like we were saying, don't let that stifle you into inactivity. Um, but I do think that it's important to kind of look at those and be like, okay, well, like, what is my, what are my people like? And what am I like? Um, what, what makes the most sense for me? Um, so yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. So yeah, depending on the medium that you choose to go with uh, for your for your long-term recurring content strategy, you're gonna have some pros and cons there. I think, you know, like I said, with the podcast, you can be a part of someone's found time. Um, but with the live stream, you have that live interaction. And with a vlog, um, I think with YouTube, there's a lot more opportunity for monetization later on. There's a lot more opportunity for building up a solid base with like, you know, with Facebook, people like the page, they're going to get notified when you go live, but the reach is far more limited than if they had subscribed to you on YouTube. So, you know, there's kind of gives and takes with every different type of content channel that you could strike up. I think what's most important, obviously, is that you start because, it's always going to seem a year away from being a year in until you're starting. And then that, that year starts shrinking. So like you can, like putting aside all excuses for why you can't start and just starting is the most important thing. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I was thinking about uh, something I wanted to share uh, with our listeners on the podcast today. This was a, a little a little uh, word bite that Ryan Dice posted uh, and I saw when I was scrolling my newsfeed the other day. And he said, uh, this is maybe the best summation I've read about how to do social the right way. And just asked, like, what did we think? Um, And it blew my mind about how it kind of tied into a lot of what we're talking about here uh, with regards to recurring media. Um, And the the little word bite was, uh, imagine your business is a reality TV show. Now pick your cast, one to three people, and decide what your show is about. Is it silly? Is it relatable? Is it funny? 
is it a behind the scenes type of show featuring what it takes to, well, in this case, run a restaurant? Uh, is it a show focused on how to enjoy good food? Is it some combination? Once you figure that out, the content will come easier and you'll get real engagement. And I think that that last sentence really is crucial when you, when you kind of look back at everything that we've been talking about here today is once you start nailing down, you know, what this is and, and how it's going to happen and how people are engaging with it as you go and really giving it like a, a good, honest shot, then you're going to find the content's going to get easier and easier and it's going to make more and more sense. So I love this, uh, I love this little this little bit that I saw, and it totally just like blew my mind and inspired me. So I wanted to make sure that I shared it today. Yeah, dude, I think that's so true. And and like with the amount of content we put out here at Entrepreneur, we really, I mean, it's my it's my reality TV channel. You know, like it's yep. it's my way of communicating with our audience in a way that makes sense for our brand. And our brand is really these people who have folded in around this idea that independence can should win they should own everything right yeah. and um and and i think that we're inching ever closer to that reality and and so kind of just to serve as like a model and an example like we wouldn't want to be preaching this without practicing it, which is why we're putting out six videos every week on YouTube, which is why we're putting out two podcast episodes every week, a new blog article every week. It's because like, you right. know, like with a very, with a very minimal amount of input, you can do it. Like, um, like it, I think a lot of people get tripped up cause they think I'm one person or we're only a team of three and you know, I just can't do that. Um, but, but I think that you can, and the more that you believe that you can and start pushing the ball down that hill, it's going to pick up snow as it goes along. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that like, I think that a lot of those like ideas of, you know, I'm just a one person artist or I don't have a big enough team or I can't do it or I don't have the tech. A lot of that, like as cliche as it sounds, is kind of like a limiting belief really. Um, and yeah. it just feed, it feeds into your it feeds into your, uh, you know, your lack of, uh, I think, willingness to push through the fear and the vulnerability that comes with doing something like that. Um, yeah. And it's kind of just, you know, it's making kind of rationalizing why that fear or that, uh, that hesitancy to actually take the action is, is there. Um, so I think breaking through that as quickly as you can and just doing something and, uh, it kind of goes back to that that stupid little catchphrase that like done is better than perfect. Um, I think that you know when it comes to recurring content, that's especially true. Um, oh, it doesn't super need, true. doesn't need to be it yeah. doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to start doing it. Yeah, because like once you've started, you have that fear of stopping, which is way better than the fear of starting, right? Yeah, that's so <laughs> true. That's so true. But there's also like a lot of people in our community who have admittedly said that they haven't even started yet. You know, like right. the, just the other day we got a comment of someone who said, look, I've been in Indie Pro for like three months now and I haven't even broken in to the trainings. I just love what you guys are doing here. And it's like, dude, start, you know, like, yeah. it, like yeah. there would be a, a lot less of a disparity between the amount of people who have started to see that horizon and the, and the amount of people who haven't, if more people tried and really put their all into it. When I started Entrepreneur, I wasn't making any money from music because I was promoting other people's music and refusing to take a cut of that. And I was working for an agency and I had to fulfill, you know, sometimes eight hours a day, sometimes six for that agency every day of the week. And after those hours were up, I'm switching over to entrepreneur. I'm putting on my content hat. I'm recording as much as I possibly can. I'm writing as much as I possibly can. And just having that feeling of like, look, it's it sucks shit right now. I don't have any audience. Nobody cares. Right. But I'm doing it. The doing it carried me through so hard. So like if you're worried that, you know, you're going to end up in this place where you're unsuccessful, the feeling of success for me was immediate because I was doing what I, what I felt like was my calling in life. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's so huge is that like you, you will feel unsuccessful until you actually are unsuccessful, but you're still smiling and that's when you'll feel successful. Yeah, totally. And I think like something you said in there kind of rings true. Uh, 
when, you know, as an artist, when you start thinking about what you want to do in your recurring content, kind of like circling back into like the, what it should look like. If you're going to be putting in the work, be something that you like, like don't necessarily look at your favorite artist and be like, I need to do it exactly like them because you might hate that. And that's not, yeah. that's not what you need to be doing. You need to make it something that like you like it enough that it will sustain you week in, week out to do it. Um, that's re- I think that that's really important, especially as you're getting started. It's got to be something that you're like enjoying. So if that's, if that's going live and, and playing some songs with your fans and doing like a Q&A, dope, do it. If that's making a podcast talking about the things that fuel your music and what makes you passionate about it, dope, do it. Like, just make sure that it's something that really makes you tick. Um, cause that'll keep you going for the long haul. Yeah. And I think uh, another thing is that like, w- you will never want to grow that until you're doing it and it's not growing. So a lot of people get hung up about like, you know, like what, I just have to put out content every week and it's going to magically work. Well, no, But because you're putting out (laughs) content every week, you're going to be concerned about the growth of that audience. And so that's going to put the impetus on you to grow it and find strategies to grow it and use our strategies to grow it, you know? Right. So like you're never going to want to grow it until you're doing it and it's not growing. So to worry about how much audience you have at the outset, like that's going to take care of itself if you're doing it weekly. I truly believe that because you'll you'll not enjoy doing it weekly and not growing, you know? Right. Yeah, totally. I I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So with that said, like, I think this, this podcast, we just kind of wanted to sound the siren call that like too many indies out there don't have a recurring media, you know, thing that they're doing. And even if it's a dude, Rick Barker has a pretty successful podcast, uh, the, the music business podcast. Yeah. Um, or I think music industry blueprint podcast. Sorry. And it's 10 minutes. Rick's going on his phone and he's cutting audio. And that's the, sometimes that's it. Right. But his consistency, the fact that he does it consistently, that's what matters. So even if you've just got a cell phone, like you can start a recurring media channel today and in a year, you'll look back from now and be glad that you did it. I think one of our favorite marketers on the team is Neil Patel. Cause the guy's just no BS. And, and he tells everyone, even people who pay him $50,000 to come consult with them for a day. And he's telling them, okay, you, you ready? Okay. Start doing something today. Do it for a year and you should see results. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think like my kind of my summation of my, my summation of thoughts is like, I would really love, like it would, it would bring me a ton of joy to see way more indies. Um, just go out there and get creative and think of ways to, to start baking in some sort of recurring content into what you're doing week to week. Um, Whatever that might look like, make it something that brings you happiness and that kind of sustains you, like we've been saying sort of throughout the course of this episode, um, and really just get into it. Um, I think that it's so important to to build your fan base and nurture your people, your tribe uh, that way, and I would be thrilled to see more people taking advantage of the ability to do that because we're truly in like an amazing time where, like Cirque was just saying, like it could be as simple as just picking up your phone and and recording a 10 minute little podcast. Uh, The fact that we're able to do that in 2019 is absurd to me. Like we have so much, we have so much uh, accessibility in that way, like right at our fingertips to not take advantage of it is a sin. Like, yeah, I think in 2019, if I could see, you know, a 25% increase <laughs> just to pick an arbit- just to pick an arbitrary yeah. number if i could see a 25% increase e- just in our community of people diving into this sort of stuff and uh, and really just making it happen and getting creative with it i would be overjoyed and i think it would just i think it would lead to like an upswelling of even more people doing it so um, yeah. it would allow i think it would allow way more independent creatives and artists and bands to uh, to inspire one another um and there's a ton of stuff to look out to, uh, you know, especially in like the YouTuber world uh, for inspiration to start doing that. So I would say 
just just do it just do it yeah. dive into it and make it yours and so just as like a wrap up like if you're doing our other strategies if you're running fan finders and and that's working well and you're getting new listeners some of them are slipping out of your fingers, man, because they're going to check your page and they don't have a world to dive into. And that world, it can be created by something like an album launch campaign. You can do it on a funnel or a campaign basis, but nothing beats having an archive of content and people knowing, hey, all this content I just checked out that I like, there's a new one next Wednesday and I can jump on the bandwagon right there. And, and that's just like, you, you can't match that value, especially when you get to the level of someone like Dave Pettigrew, who is able to now make offers from his live streams that convert pretty well because people are there to see him and they know him. And so that he's developed that level of relationship where they're actually ready for an offer. So it can really pay dividends over the long term for so many reasons. And the only thing that's standing in between you and, and, and having that reality is starting. So just start pick a podcast, a live stream, a, a YouTube channel, a blog, whatever speaks to your creative medium and start communicating with your audience. Every time you publish it, send it out to them via email or messenger as you're building your list and far your, your ads are going to be more efficient. Your acquisition is going to be more efficient because people are sticking around to see the next thing. And that's kind of, that's kind of the value of recurring content in a nutshell. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think um, make it. We have so many. We have so many creative people uh, in our community, and I know so many creative people that listen to our podcast. Uh, I challenge you, wholeheartedly challenge you. Make your content an extension of that creativity. I know you're creative in the way that you make your music. I know you're beginning to become creative in the way that you think about your marketing. Make this a part of it. Uh, make that just another extension of that creativity and tap into that. And it will, it will provide, you know, dividends to your fan base. Um, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't encourage you to do it more. 100%. And, and if you got a cell phone in your hand, you really have no excuse guys. So think about how you're going to get started this week, not next um, and speaking of which, this month is all about recurring content where we're going to use our recurring content to tell you about how to make your recurring content so that you can <laughs> put out content on a recurring basis. You know what I mean? It's, so, it's so <laughs> meta. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're going to be talking about it on, uh, on the podcast. We're going to be talking about it in the group. We're going to be sending you emails about it. If you want to hear more about how you can best amplify your recurring media strategy and, and get it started this year, then definitely stick around all February. We're going to be providing you tons of information, including a brand new training on this subject. And we're going to be offering our podcast listeners a significant discount on that training for the first week it's live. So definitely stay tuned to get access to that discount. If you haven't already subscribed to us on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to do that so you can get these episodes week to week. And, uh, and we'll see you next week on our recurring content, numero uno, Creative Juice. Fellas, East Coast, fellas, West Coast.